Today we have a throwback video essay about Hasu Bean and her struggle with rumors in the K-pop industry and how she not only impacted the K-pop community, but ended up leaving and having a prosperous life. I felt like this was a cool video to check out because I feel like even in 2024, there are so many rumors that are spread and so many people who are affected by these rumors. So I just wanted to shed a little bit of light on the people who actually feel the consequences of these rumors. With the power the internet holds today, anyone can come up with a random lie involving celebrities. Yeah. Sometimes the lie becomes a rumor that can even achieve work. Hold up. Mama Moo's solar response to rumors that she is a North Korean refugee. Worldwide attention. But way before most people had a cell phone in their hand, rumors were already taking gigantic proportions and tormenting public figures. One of the South Korean celebrities who suffered the most with gossip regarding her personal life during the early years of K-pop was the soloist Ha Su Bin, to the point where she had no other choice but to set the record straight about her own biological gender on national television. What? Dang, this the OG YouTube. Nah, this is crazy. Ha Su Bin is a South Korean singer, songwriter, music producer, architect, and fashion designer. Okay. Who gained fame back in the 90s, more specifically in 1992, when her debut album, Lisa in Love, came out under the company Hyundai Records. The album contains the hit single, No, 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 and sold over 100,000 copies. Quickly. Bro, the crazy thing is. I've been watching the series where they talk about like how K-pop came to be, how idols came to be, all of that extra stuff. And they talked about how repetition is a big part of music. And even though I kind of knew that, like the more I listen to music, the more I realize my favorite songs have a lot of repetition in it. Like the, the hook is hella catchy. I could re-sing the hook because it's catchy. Like it really do matter how catchy the song is. I ain't gonna lie. Like, irrespective of the message of the song, the dance, and all of that stuff, even the dance, if the dance is catchy and easy to, like, people like simple and easy. And, like, even though we like to feel like we wanna be smart and this, that, and the other, let's be completely honest. It's easier to catch on and you get a lot more people involved when things are simple. Giving the singer a huge amount of popularity. She became known for being too pretty to be real and marked an entire generation with her angelic voice and appearance. <laughs> Innocent <laughs> nah, looking fire. face and doll like structure with defining jawline and collarbone, straight shoulders and long black hair. Ha Su Bin was one of the pioneers and trendsetters of the pure concept in K-pop of female fashion and standards. Okay. Even 30 years later, her style is still being seen on young girls. At the same time that she was a fresh and unique figure in the market, Subin Bro, was very compared to, to her so peers, different. Lee ji -yoon and Kang Suzy. When she first came out, she was seen as their new rival for also having an innocent image. But despite the comparisons, she had a successful career, even expanding it into new areas and countries, receiving great opportunities. Dang. Including a collaboration with Kang Suzy herself. Okay. It's not news to anyone that female idols who are pretty, talented, young, and successful are an easy target for a lot of hate. Especially yeah. if they don't have a made-up good girl personality. Subin checked all of these boxes and was also a pioneer of this hate train that still goes on till this day against idols who fit the pattern and who nowadays are known as it girls. Dang. Another factor that played a huge role on the hate against Subin was that she had a lot of male fans which made girls jealous. So it didn't take long until rumors against her started to be spread. Come on now. <laughs> including that she was the secret girlfriend of singer Soteji. All because he talked about a woman really? in one of his songs and his fans who were mostly teenage girls chose to believe that the woman was Subin. Bro, it's crazy that people really come up with rumors that could possibly affect somebody's career that they don't know. I just learned about Soteji and stuff like that and it's like even if she was the boyfriend or girlfriend, my bad. Even if she was the girlfriend of her or he was her boyfriend or whatever, like what do that have to do with anything at all? Because both artists debuted around the same time, attended shows together, and basically because she's pretty. Other rumors that were created said that Subin's real name was actually Ha jong -wa, that she only wore long skirts and dresses because she had hairy legs and was what? a transgender woman with the arguments that she's too tall, sang in a higher register to try to hide her natural, deeper voice. 
don't piss me off bro <laughs> this is what we came up with she wear long dresses because your legs hairy that's what he's saying ladies come on bro and the crazy thing is they was trying to put transgender allegations on her like everybody don't grow hair if she didn't have regular maintenance her legs could have been hairy nigga and it wouldn't been nothing wrong with it i'm one of them niggas who like she be like oh i ain't shaved okay and i'm one of them <laughs> that someone saw her adam's apple in the bathroom and that her hands are too big for a female <laughs> oh Subin's hands are big due to her love for boxing and wrestling for she real? already showed her physical strength on shows at the time spoke in a direct way and revealed that her favorite books were about warfare since none of these stuff are considered feminine, the rumor was created as a way of trying to ridicule the singer. As even today, people who don't follow the cis heteronormativity norms are seen in a bad light by many. So you can imagine how things were during the early 90s. Yeah, even back more in the day so it was in a conservative bad. country. The story gained so much strength that it came to the general public, Subin, and her company's attention. So in the year of 1993, Subin went out on broadcast to clear the rumors. Okay. She showed pictures of herself as a child and even brought her older sister to confirm she was indeed a cisgender woman. Bro, the fact you got to do all that. Even with the public and media wanting to publicly humiliate her, Subin carried herself gently throughout the entire broadcast and stated, I'm a woman. I was born a girl. I am just how I am. My hands are big because I played a lot of sports. I like boyish things just because it's interesting to me. I would love to visit the army one day. I'm just a pretty girl. I was born like this. Yeah, why she can't be herself? Yeah, be After weird. this whole controversy, Subin continued active, but only until the following year. In 94, she retired from the music industry and moved out of South Korea to pursue higher studies in architecture and design in Canada. Nice. Subin spent years out of the spotlight, and also spent her time expressing herself artistically in different genres, such as painting, plastic art, fashion, and literature. Nah, that's in 2006, fire. she established her own agency, called La Stella Inc., in which she worked as a music producer and creator, but with no intention of returning to the music scene. Following her aggression from the industry, new rumors started to be spread, but now as of why she had never appeared in the media again. Some continued stuck in the past saying that she went to the military because, quote, people discovered that she's a man, while others said that she had died due to an incurable disease. What? But that was until 2010. When Subin made an unexpected comeback with the album, The Persistence of Memory. Hey, okay, clap back, sis. During its promotion, she made an appearance on the variety show Radio Star, alongside Kong Suzy, and revealed why she didn't continue in show business, saying that it doesn't fit her personality, and that life as a celebrity was really difficult. I bet, bro. Especially back in the day. I want y'all to understand life today and life back then are so completely different. Not only as a celebrity, but as a, like, regular person. You know what I'm saying? Like, so much has changed. And it's just, like, I respect so many people who went through the times that they lived. I try to be as open-minded as possible when it comes to just me being a person. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like... So many people back in the day had so many different struggles that we don't have, but they also had so many different benefits. But they was the only people living in that time. They was the first people to go through that stuff. So it's like the mistakes that they made, like, sure, we looking at it from the future and we like, oh, I would have did this. I would have did that. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, but we wasn't there. We didn't live through it for the first time. So it's kind of like right now we living through times and it's like, in the future, people might look back at our t our life and be like, oh, I would have did this, I would have did that. But no, you wouldn't have because you wasn't living through it. You didn't have future sight. But that's what gave me respect for people like this. And I could understand the celebrity life not being for people. I think a lot of people do, do it because, number one, they're passionate about something. And number two, they kind of want the financial freedom that come with it. You know what I'm saying? But they don't necessarily want everything that come with it. Kind of like how you go to a job, you work, and you don't necessarily like your job, but it pay the bills. It allow you to have freedom outside of your job. So you do what you got to do to make ends meet or to have the life that you want, you know? She also talked about all the rumors that surrounded her career and clarified. The rumor about an incurable disease is actually because I have a weak heart but the rest are all nonsense. Regarding the rumors about her having hairy legs, she said she actually does have hair on her legs, but it's not thick. <laughs> when asked about the talks that she was the secret lover of Soteji, she explained, 
At the time, there weren't many female singers, so the jealousy of male singers' fan clubs was something I had to experience at least once. Yeah. Kung Suzy also dealt with a lot of hate during her career. After hearing Subin's story about receiving letters with cut-out photos, she recalled that she even received blood-written letters one what time at a fan signing event. And nah, the letter said, crazy. if you go to the bathroom today, know that you're going to die. Are y'all okay, bro? <laughs> so she jokingly said during the episode, when Ha Subin appeared with ribbons, gloves, or wearing a straw hat and a lace dress, the female anti-fans shifted their attention to her. Thanks to Ha Subin, things got a bit easier for me. That's fire. Outro. I like video ha essays. Subin's we need more in the K-pop was made on industry. her company's YouTube channel a year ago. But she hasn't returned to music till this day and seems to have given up on fame. If that's yeah. really the case, she had more than enough reasons to do so. So I, I feel like if you got the money and that's what you was after and you just want the stability, because a lot of people could say that they hate people who hoard money and stuff like that. But I feel like it's a fine line between hoarding money and getting a lot of money so that you can live a peaceful life. I feel like that's kind of like the goal that I want to do. But I do want to continue to make videos for as long as possible um and just continue to chase my dreams but if it comes to the detriment of my mental and my actual life then i can see how people would want to give that up and just use the money to live a st stable life you know what i'm saying so it's like i respect her for i that, hope she's having you know? a great life and knows that even though she was treated poorly by this industry she was one of its pioneers who is still remembered and referenced in contemporary days Nah, this was a really, really good video. How did y'all feel about this video? Did you enjoy it? I feel like I really did enjoy this video. It was very, very peaceful. I like the little classical music in the background. And it was nice to understand her story. Um, I like to do these little videos here and there because I feel like this community could use some like huge, 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 um, what is it called? Video essay accounts. I actually wanted to do a video essay account on my own, but I feel like I haven't been around long enough to actually deep dive and give good credible information on all of the you know and i know how big the k-pop community is but that's also why i continue to make these videos and learn about all of this stuff so that one day when i'm older and i've been in the k-pop community for a while i could actually give really really good video essays and i feel like that'll be like my retirement one day i'm telling y'all heads up right now years and years and years ahead T 10 20 years ahead that that's what it's gonna come to you know what i'm saying like i want to be able to, to really enjoy k-pop and um be immersed in the community and the things that everybody go through um so that not only i could have first-hand experience but one day i could you know be one of the elders and talk about the new groups and um, all of the stuff that the old group's been through and I want to have multiple channels where they all K-pop inspired You know what I'm saying? So, um, thank you guys for all of the support Especially if you watch this video because I don't know if this video will get very many views I watch this purely because I enjoy it and I do that Um, because I know the goal that I have I know the dream that I have and I appreciate everybody who'd be like Hey Vex, do what you want to do, you know post the videos you want to post so that you attract the people you want on your channel and i try to be transparent and have fun and really just you know take your mind off of the world because i know that's what i grew up watching youtube for you know to pass the time take my take my mind off of things so um we got a long long journey i want to live my entire life you know recording videos whether i'm old and i'm about to pass pass away and i just got my phone and i'm recording and telling y'all thank y'all for all of the you know what i'm saying like i want to be able to live my entire life on youtube and use this as like history you know and then i want to pass my youtube channel off to somebody else who is passionate about recording content and you know just showing up every single day or showing up as much as possible and that's my goal for my life right now you know is to be a great person and record it you know what i'm saying i feel like i got a lot of stuff that i could do with my life um in my actual life but i also feel like content is very very it's like the epitome of art and i feel like it could be a history book you know what i'm saying this internet thing could be a history book just like books you know what I'm saying? I feel like my YouTube channel could be that. So that's what I'm trying to do. That's my grand scheme. If you, if you, <laughs> and I feel like it'll be a great way to show my personality. So in the future, I will have a lot of projects on the way. 
uh, including my actual real life family and stuff like that. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. But I appreciate everybody who shows support. Um, and I can't wait to see what the future holds. This was a good watch. Thank you for watching to the end. Peace and love. Eat your vegetables so you live a long time. Become a green giant. And I'll catch y'all in the next one.